In this video, we're painting up the new Blade Guard veterans and Ancient in a pretty unique color scheme. Welcome to Zorb Zorb Gaming, my name's Locke and Linton Keen, and welcome to a pretty special Indominus project. Brent from Goobertown Hobbies and myself both got this box nice and early, and we were having a chat about something really cool we could do with the models when Brent came up with an awesome idea. Thanks, Larky. You're welcome, Brent. So, we decided that we're both going to paint up a squad of Blade Guard veterans in a scheme inspired by the colours of our friendly local game store. Now, my local go-to store is called Briz Vegas Comics here in Brisbane. They're a fantastic little game shop with loads of minis and games and some awesome tables to play on as well but their logo their store colors are black and white which is always a kind of interesting tricky sort of premise to apply to a model but luckily it is something that I have a bit of experience with hello darkness my old friend so um let's jump over to the table and get on started so up first, of course, is Assembly. Now, the Blade Guard and the Blade Guard Ancient are on the huge command sprue that is chock-a-block full of models. The Judicia, the Chaplain, and the Eradicators are on here as well. So dig out all of the relevant parts and then get those bad boys assembled. These guys go together relatively simply. Uh, you just got to make sure you get the right arms paired up with the right model. Otherwise, the Power Swords and those uh, Storm Shields won't sit neatly on the joins. None of these poses have any options, so they do to go together nice and simply, but I have kept the Storm Shield separate as well as one of the holsters, just so that it's nice and easy to get in and access all of those details. We'll paint those up as a sub-assembly and then attach them later. So they're looking pretty great, but this banner, this banner's very cool. It's got a corpse on it, it's got loads of detail, but I'm just not vibing it for this paint job. I want something that's broad and flat, more of a classic cloth kind of banner, so that we can use that as another kind of opportunity to showcase the store that we're painting this up for and get some logo and some branding, maybe even some transfers on that banner. So what I'm going to do is chip that banner off and I'm going to swap it in for a much more classic banner. So I dug through all of my old bits that I, I found like this bag of fourth edition bits that I had from when I used to play as a teenager and found a couple of different banners in there and a few little details and I tricked up something that, that works pretty well I think and is going to be much more fun for showcasing our store's branding. So I attached that all on, pinned it together so that it was nice and strong and isn't going to come off and glued it together with a blend of plastic glue and super glue and now these guys are ready to prime. I also did just for a moment think about gluing the original banner on top of this new massive banner but I uh, threw away that idea pretty quickly because it looked kind of stupid. So as I talked about in the intro, this video is all about distilling that color palette into the scheme. So of course, with a nice monochromatic black and white, I'm gonna give these a lovely white prime. I use the Tamiya Bright White Surface Primer because I really like that primer. Good adhesion, good grain size, a little bit better than the Citadel Corax White. So as this scheme is predominantly monochromatic, we're going to be working with white, black, and shades of grey, and we have to decide what is going to be our primary colour and what's going to be our accent colour. Now, because everything is just so grimdark in Warhammer 40,000, I wanted these models to stand out and really pop, so I've gone for a nice bright white armour, and I'm going to bring black in as my accent. So we're going to start with the white, and we're going to get a good finish on that before we bring in those black details. So the first thing we want to do is grab the Apothecary White Contrast Paint and then throw it in the bin because we're going to do something much better. So we're going to grab a blend of Null Oil and Lamian Medium. We're going to mix up a sexy little glaze here. We'll do a 50-50 ratio of the Lamian Medium and the Null Oil. I actually mix up a bulk lot of this and put it in a separate pot because I use this glaze a lot, and I mean a lot. And we're putting this glaze all over the model. Basically, we want a nice even coating across all of that white armor. This is a fantastic glaze that just really pops. It sinks into the recessed detail and it also creates just a little bit of shading over the main white panel, which is what the contrast paints try to do, but Apothecary White is garbage, and we want nice bright white armor for our lovely Regal Knights of Briz Vegas comics. So we want to make sure that applies nice and evenly, particularly on the broad surfaces. It is quite thin as it's a glaze, so it will pull away from those raised areas, so make sure you get good toning across all of the surfaces and that it does sit nice and defined in those recessed details. Then we're going to bring in some Black Templar Contrast, which is a fantastic contrast paint and we're going to wet work this layer while the glaze is still wet. So we're going to target the undersuit that's underneath the armor which we want to be black. We can see exposed regions uh, on the inside of the elbows, the back of the calves, up underneath the groin and we're going to come in, load our brush up with a bit of black templar contrast and then just drop that into those regions and because it's already wet the capillary action of that glaze on the surface will automatically pull the black templar contrast into those deep recesses and you don't have to get really crazy painting it nice and detailed 
child with your brush. Now once that layer has fully dry, we're going to keep working with black Templar contrast and start to add our more traditional black accent areas. I'm going to put a coat down all over the cloth regions. Now this black Templar straight down over bright white isn't the most amazing finish on the cloth, but don't worry because this is our base layer and we're going to come back and put some really lovely wet blended highlights. We're just creating essentially a luminance profile on this cloth of black and white, which we'll layer up later on. And then we want to get black Templar and apply it to all of our significant details. So so the rims around the shoulder pauldrons, uh, we've got the Aquila of course across the breastplate and various details around the model including all of our skull iconography and we're going to do the sword, hilt, grip and blade. We're going to have a really cool dark looking power sword. So the model's looking great, we've got the black down, we've got the fundamentals of the white down. We're just going to finish off the white armour now by bringing in one of the Citadel dry paints, Praxetti White. And we're going to dry brush quite vigorously over all of the bright white components of the armour. Now this is the really great step because we're adding that highlight back to the white. So we've got those lovely mid-tones with the shaded null oil glaze, the deeper recesses and the contrasting elements of the Black Templar. And now we're restoring those bright white highlights to the raised area areas on all of these hard lines of armor plating and edging and grip and that way we're going to get a really lovely white armor profile across the whole model. Vigorous circular motions are the key here with quite an old bristly brush. In fact, I quite like to get a really large brush and you can also do this step before you apply your Black Templar because then you don't have to be a little bit kind of uh, as controlled with where you're applying it because obviously you want to keep those black details clean and that's what I normally do but I was just, you know, losing my mind here. So I'm really happy with how the black and white are looking on our hero model. What I'm going to do now is get the rest of the blade guard up to that standard because we're going to be batch painting these guys as we go through this little build journey. Uh, and we can see that once it's all kind of assembled as a squad, they're looking really fantastic. We've got our fundamental color profile down or lack thereof. And now we're going to jump into really kicking it up a notch with some accents and details. So I'm really happy with how the white is looking across these models, but it's time to really level up that black and get some lovely, lovely highlights and blends on that black cloth and also our black accent detail. So what we're going to do is just grab our wet palette and I'm going to grab a bad and black and any grey that you guys have got to hand that's nice and neutral. I'm using the stone grey from the Vallejo range and we're going to mix up a bit of a gradient on our wet palette of kind of darker greys moving into some slightly lighter greys and we're going to create a series of graduated blends and highlights. We'll work on the cloth first. I'm going to grab a really dark grey. It's sort of almost 80% Abaddon Black to 20% my grey highlight. And I'm going to apply that grey nice and thinly, kind of draw it out over your wet palette first, and then apply a really thin layer all over the black cloth. Now this is obviously a darker grey and it is coating over all of that black, but it's got, you know, that's really thin, so it's got a bit of translucency. So the profile of the Black Templar underneath will come through that, and we'll still see a little bit of those deep recesses and get a little bit of that natural contrast trust that the Black Templar has created through this layer. Then what we're going to do is wet blend this whole cloth layer and keep working into this color. We've got that, that gray foundation down and we're going to bring in a slightly lighter gray and uh, kind of caress and build up some highlights on the more raised regions of the fabric folds. And then we'll go a little lighter again, take a, a region from the gradient that has a little bit more of a lighter gray in and come back with a thinner profile region and just build up a lovely selection of wet blended highlights. And the reason I do this wet is because you just get so many lovely natural transitions. I don't like the classic really over edge highlighty look that you get on a lot of the kind of heavy metal look uh, models and, and I really like natural blends. Doing this with a brush is much easier when you're wet blending. So blend in all those greys and as it all dries it will all kind of seep together and you'll still get that lovely graduation of colour with the brightness at the top of the highlights and the deeper colours down in the recessed folds of the cloak. So I also applied these blends highlights to the rim around the shoulder pauldrons and the storm shield but all of the other black details on the model we have the aquila across the breastplate the various skulls and heraldry and of course the sword they're going to be treated with quite a heavy dry brush of lead belcher we're going to bring the metallic element into this scheme now i've gone with a silver look for all of the metallics because i really want to keep it monochromatic and obviously silver is a lot more in that tonal region of the black and white than a gold so we're going silver across the breastplate and on all of these details quite a heavy 
heavy dry brush here, we want to leave the, the deepest black in those recesses, but get quite a buildup of silver across these regions. When you're applying your lead belcher to the blade of the sword, you do need to be careful that you don't leave any brush strokes. You really just want to be accenting the fuller of the blade as well as the edges and get a really nice shape and profile of silver glints across that black. It's a really cool look for a dark saber blade. And once all of those silvers are down, what I'm going to do is come back in with some Stormhost silver, that really lovely bright silver from the Citadel range, and just would come in with my fine tipped layer brush and create a few little accents on a couple of the finer points just to create a nice bright highlight on those silver regions. So the scheme's really coming together now. It's time to start kicking on with a few of these really special details. And of course, we need to kick on these purity seals. So the Flesh Terror's red contrast went down on all over the wax seals uh, to get a really nice red deep undercoat and apply that evenly so you get lovely separation off the rim and the inner section of the seal. And then I brought in some Skeleton Horde to begin those bone layers and crisp up all of that bright white prime. Over, over the white, the, the bone, the Skeleton Horde does apply really nicely and it gives you a good foundation but we will uh, highlight both of these regions later on. First, I'm going to grab some bloody red from the Vallejo game color, but uh, Evil Sun's red scarlet from Citadel would work as well. And then just do some really nice highlights around the seals to give them a little bit of pop so that they weren't just that pure contrast layer. And then for the parchment regions, I came in with a little bit of bone white from Vallejo. Now, there were a couple of details left on the models at this stage, namely the big iron halo sitting astride the backpack at the rear of the Space Marine. And I wanted to really come to make that a bit special. So I put down a lead belcher prime and got that nice and evenly spread all over the halo uh, to, you know, beginning in that silver space to keep it on theme. Uh, and then I darkened that up a little bit with a coat of null oil to really bring in some shade and, and get some nice contrast through the metallic elements. But I also wanted to make it kind of stand out a little bit. So we went just a little bit off theme and started to nudge a few of these regions, the iron halo and also a couple of the other skull details into a brassy zone by bringing in some Seraphim Sepia. Now because I darkened the silver up with Null Oil and it, it's quite a dark silver, even though it's gone brassy, it still feels kind of native to the scheme and still feels like we're obeying the rules we set for ourselves, but it's just a subtle kind of transient highlight, a little difference for these metallic regions which makes those details stand out more and just gives the model a little bit of extra detail. So as the scheme came together, I did sort of feel that a lot of it was kind of one note, one tone, and I wanted to bring in a few little extra pops of detail. So I decided to carry over the red from the purity seals and bring those into the eyes and get that kind of deep dark red with a tiny accent. And then I also just brought in some of my pure bright grey that I mixed into my black layer and applied that evenly as a base coat all over the belt that goes around the Space Marine's waist uh, just to create a, a point of difference between all of the dark black details there. There's all the pouches and the holsters and the various kind of dark metal elements and I just needed something else in that region of the model to help all of those details pop, to have something to sit against. So some of the grey went down and then I just applied some Null Oil over that grey to give it a little bit of a shade and make sure it wasn't popping too much so that the details are what's being focused on, not the belt. And then I was really, really happy with how those had come along. I just grabbed some Storm Vermin Fur, which is kind of a generic darker grey from Citadel and applied that all over the base, which we'll come back to when we get to basing. But I am really happy with how the three blade guard are looking. So with our three blade guard finished, it is of course time to return to our blade guard ancient. Now there's not a lot different about this model. Obviously it doesn't have a storm shield and it does have quite a few other kind of details, but in essence the scheme is the same, but I just wanted to touch on a few points of difference uh, which you kind of need to consider uh, when approaching this model. First up is there is so much cloth, so much cloth, which is a really great opportunity to work on your wet blending skills. So I did the same process with my bad and black and my lighter grey, really focusing on getting some lovely natural blends between all of the regions of cloth. There's a lot of nice well-defined folds here, so you can do some kind of crisper edging as well. And it's important here that uh, we have a little bit more definition in the cloak folds because so much of this model is this cloak and so much of his armor is hidden. We really want that cloak to have a bit more kind of definition and detail so that the model really sings and it doesn't just look like a big blob of black and grey. 
Up next is our metallic detail. Now, he just has a whole lot load more of this. There is more bling hanging from his waist, and there's a whole bunch of really lovely chains that go finely across that big fabric region. And this is fantastic, because it means we get a few more a few more ways to break up that mass of black. And there's also some metallic details up around the top of the banner, a few Aquila eagle arms, and various bits and pieces on the ornate stylings of the banner. I brought Stormhost Silver in once again to kind of really brighten and accent these details, and these were particularly important on the Necron hand that he's carrying, and also those eagle formations at the top of the banner, because I wanted those to be brighter focal points on the model that really grabbed the eye, so bringing in that brighter silver on them really makes them pop. I did the exact same process for the purity seals on this model, hitting them with the Flesh Terror's Red Contrast and the Skeleton Horde, and then layering those up with the brighter reds and the bone colours, but I didn't choose to apply Skeleton Horde, our classic parchment colour, to the banner itself. I decided that this was obviously a huge block of colour, so I was going to keep this as our, our bright white cloth. So what I'm going to do here is just the same sort of process as we did for our armour by bringing in the Nuln Oil Glaze and applying that evenly all over the banner. There's some really subtle folds in this sculpt, which the glaze just ate up for breakfast. It loved it. And we got some really lovely definition on the cloak. And because it's nice and thin, even though it's a big, broad, flat area, the glaze applies really nicely. You get nice definition. Uh, and, and it doesn't look like a big block of grey now. It still has that white shining through. Uh, and with a little bit of a dry brush with our Praxetti white, you can bring up those highlights and get a really nice looking uh, canvas, shall we say, for what's going to be coming down next. Then the only final differences with this Blade Guard Ancient, we're bringing in our shades. I put a little bit more Seraphim Sepia through different uh, kind of accent details. Obviously, we had his his unique Iron Halo and a few of the extra bits of bling hanging off his chains. And then there were the eagle kind of formations at the top of the banner. So they got a little bit of a coat as well. And so did the Necron hand that he was holding. Once again, just to separate all of those details and get those focal points. And there we have the finished squad. They are looking absolutely fantastic. And I, I'm really happy with how the scheme has translated to the models, but I felt that these guys needed something a little bit more to make them more overtly Briz Vegas comics. So I jumped into Photoshop, grabbed the store's logo, and made myself up a custom sort of transfer sheet. Uh, I sent that off to a local decal printer here in Australia and got myself some fantastic custom homemade decals, which we can then apply all over the model. I'm talking shoulder pads, I'm talking their mini shields, they've got lots of great spots for extra bits and detail, and then of course, we we have our juicy banner. Now, to make sure that these decals apply really nicely, I'm going to put a gloss varnish or a semi-gloss varnish down all over these models, uh, which is a really important foundation because it means that you're applying the glossy transfer to a glossy surface, and then we can blend these all later on. So I got my transfer sheet. You'll notice I did a whole bunch of different sizes because I was kind of shooting in the dark as to what size would fit on the shoulder pads nicely and later on the banner. And then we're just going to cut these all out from the decal sheet and and then drop them straight in some water. You just leave the decal in the water for a few seconds and then it will come off nicely on your finger and drop that decal straight down onto the shoulder pauldron. Now, technically you can apply these with Microsol and Microset, which are specialized decal solutions, but I didn't have them to hand and I needed to get this done quickly. Uh, so I just uh, used water and uh, put a few little nicks in the transfer where it wasn't bending it and give it time and it will fit eventually. Now it's time to do our banner. Now we want a big juicy logo in the center of this banner. Uh, so I I kind of grabbed the one that would fit the best because I didn't want to have any overhang, soaked it in some water, and then uh, applied that nice and evenly to the banner itself. Now, this was probably a little bit smaller than I was hoping. That banner is very vertically tall. There's a lot of kind of negative space now on that banner, uh, whereas this, this logo is it's probably a bit smaller than I would have liked. So I decided I could try and trick up the banner by bringing in some more classic transfers uh, from various uh, transfer sheets that I had lying around. Obviously, I've got the Indominus sheet that came with these models, uh, and I even had a, a few old Space Marine ones from old Space Marine box sets back in 4th and 5th edition. So I grabbed a few little details, some scripture details, uh, some various kind of accent banners, and I also grabbed some Roman numerals and applied them underneath the logo, uh, creating the date uh, that my local store had just had its reopening, because they've just moved premises into a brand new big site, and so I thought I'd uh, grab that date there of their grand opening and put that underneath, which was just a special little detail. So those guys are full fully transferred up, a few little bits of bling, the logo on the pauldrons and the banner, and I'm super happy with how they've turned out. 
So that's our transfers done, and I'm really happy with how they've turned out. The black on white is really striking, it's a nice clean look, and I'm particularly happy with the banner. Even though the logo was a bit smaller than I wanted, I tricked it out with some extra details, and mm, it's looking really mint. Really, really happy. Now what we need to do is blend those transfers with the model. We've got that semi-gloss underneath, and the transfers themselves are quite glossy. So now we'll apply matte varnish to the whole model. That will blend those transfer elements, and the models are painted now, so we want a nice matte varnish on them anyway. And then we just need to base them and to do that I want to do something a bit special I'm gonna go for kind of like a diorama like a bit of a display piece uh, so that they look really nice on the shelf they're not just four models something that we can sit there maybe we'll do up a little branded logo or like a description or name plate uh, and make this a really nice display piece for the store so I've got two photo frames here uh, one slightly larger and uh, we're gonna build up a bit of a, a, a grim dark rubble a, a urban sort of story on our base and I'm thinking we'll lean into the whole theme of the base and, and and the store, uh, and uh, and go for you know these are these are our staff, our defenders of Bris Vegas comics in the 41st millennium, and what I've got here. <laughs> without knocking my microphone, is a whole box of Sector Imperialis ruins from the early 2000s. That's about four Imperial cities worth in there, which are for a future project, but we'll rummage through that, get a couple of wall pieces, uh, and mock up a little facade to sit on the base itself, and represent uh, Bris Vegas comics in the 41st millennium. We'll probably put a bit more branding on that as well, which will look cool, use a few more of the transfers, and get the logo uh, in a few extra places, uh, and then we can have these guys representing the staff, defending their gaming store in the 41st millennium millennium, which I think will be a really cool little story to tell uh, and an, a lovely display piece for the store to set up. So let's swing the camera around and we'll get cracking on designing our display piece. So my first big decision is which base am I going to use, the bigger or the smaller? These models are on 40 mil bases, so they do take up quite a lot of real estate. And once you bring in some other elements, it became apparent pretty quickly that I'd need to use the bigger frame. So I tipped out all of my old bits from the Sanctum Imperialis and Imperial City kits and had a bit of a rummage to grab some pieces that really caught my eye. I found a cool doorway that was nice and regal, which I think was Sanctum Imperialis, which will work well for the opening for the store, and then just grabbed a few bits of walls and a banister and some broken floors. I also got some floor pieces that I'm going to nestle into the board itself. Speaking of the board, we need a sheet of one inch foam, which we're going to cut down to size. I just threw some off cuts together and then I can really start to nestle the building into the board itself. Uh, I put it on a bit of an angle so it would form quite a nice backdrop and, and not kind of feel so locked down to hint it that there was the rest of the world beyond this display board. It wasn't just an isolated scene. Uh, and then got my knife and, and really planed the surface down so that we had a nice slope falling away from the door itself. Once that was all kind of locked out, I sealed everything up with a bit of multi-purpose filler uh, to get some really nice joins and, and make sure everything was really snug and tight. And then it was just a matter of gluing together my Imperial City components and then gluing those down onto the board. Now, because we're gluing just some plastic kind of building components down onto foam, I wanted these to have some physical bonding and not just a bit of PVA glue. So I drilled into the bottom of the door well, which is the thickest piece, and then put some kind of timber bamboo skewers uh, up into the bottom and then those would be able to sit as big spikes that go down into the foam and then coated that whole thing in glue so that it was nice and bonded and glued together. Then I brought a little bit more putty back in and kind of puttied in and around the building just so that when I'm building up my rubble profile uh, it's not such an even meet between the bottom of the building and the ground. I can build up a little bit more of a slope that this rubble and the, the war has been going on for, a, for, for quite some time so the rubble's been building up around the edge of the building walls. So while that's still dry, I'm going to begin to put the foundation of the texture down on this board by bringing in some stone finished paint. This is just a kind of grey matte priming paint that has sand and grit mixed through it that I get from the store. You could easily mix it up yourself by mixing in some fine grain sand. And I'm going to apply this just all over the main flat foam surface, which just helps build up the texture and seal it more importantly. But it's really important to apply this evenly all the way around the edges. Once all of that is dry and do give it a good time to dry or get Get your heat gun on there and lock it all down, we're going to bring in our spray paints. Now I'm going to prime the entire foam surface with a foam safe primer. This is just a, a spring brand that we have here in Australia, but there's lots of foam safe aerosol paints all around the world. And then I'm going to come in with a Rust-Oleum bright grey and apply a prime nice and evenly over all of the material components. Now I went for a light grey for this building because obviously we want to keep it in that monochromatic scheme. And also the basic material that we're applying is going to be really dark, really 
really grim dark, so it creates a nice contrast against that as well. So with the primers down, it's time to jump into painting, and it's a very, very simple scheme. We don't want this to be crazy ornate, it's just going to be some dry brushed greys with a wash so that we're not detracting from the models, which are the focus of this building. So up first, we're just going to dry brush a bright grey, quite close to the old fortress grey in Citadel terms, all over the building, and just create some lovely highlights on all of the raised details, really kind of focusing on getting every raised detail in this accent to create that two-tone between the base prime and this dry brush, and then we'll come back in with a bright white and create some accent highlights by dry brushing all over the top of the model, kind of imitating as if the sun was beaming down in this grim dark landscape, and then also hitting a few bits of the stone here and there to create a little bit more contrast in the scheme. Once those dry brushes are completely dry, I'm just going to bring in a black wash and apply that quite universally over all of the model. This is a pretty dirty wash with a pretty crappy wash. It's just some craft paint, uh, but that doesn't matter because it's a filthy building and we're just applying this everywhere to get grime and grease and get into those recessed details, amping up the contrast and building up the grease and grime profile of this building surface. I also applied some of our dry brushing steps to the outer rim of the base itself, and then once all of that paint is dry, our painting stage is over. There's no need to go any more detail than that. So now we get into the real fun, and that is basing our diorama. I absolutely love applying basing materials, and this time we're going to be using the Grim Dark City Rubble from the Geek Gaming Scenic range, which you can actually buy from my online store down in the description below. This is the first time I've got the chance to use this basing material, and it's absolutely awesome. I love it. It's a blend of black and grey aggregates, which has some really nice kind of glinting sort of material that runs through it. Almost feels a bit like an iron ore. It's really cool. Looks fantastic down on the table as well. So to apply our basing mix to the display board, we're going to use a mix of PVA and matte varnish. So I just grabbed myself a cup, put about a centimetre or three quarters of an inch of PVA in the bottom of that cup, and then the same amount of varnish, and then fill the rest up with water and mix the crap out of it. It's quite a diluted medium, uh, but it works really really fantastically. The varnish is an extra bonding and locking agent, keeps obviously the gloss out as well, but it helps really lock down everything that you're applying and gives you a strong bond in combination with the PVA. So I'm going to grab a brush and apply that mixture all over the base, and then I'm just going to grab the Grim Dark City Rubble and sprinkle that all over the model. Now I like to use a sieve here because it helps me apply uh, in kind of with a bit more control really. The fine grains will fall through and you can shake those out uh, and that'll get a really nice even coverage of the smaller stuff and that leaves the larger and medium sized stones for you to kind of sprinkle out the top of the sieve uh, and then you can sort of control where more of those big rubble profiles go. I also like to build up a bit more of a rubble concentration around the edges of the building because there would have been debris blowing up against those building walls and falling down to the base. So you can have a lot of fun kind of designing the rubble profile of your layout and it's just, it's such a fantastic looking material. It looks awesome. I also decided that I wanted to apply some rubble inside the building but then I had the idea of making the building look a little bit more like Bris Vegas comics by grabbing some of my bigger transfers that I didn't manage to use and applying them to the floor as kind of like, you know, embossed floor tiles. Now, obviously, this is a transfer going down over a not flat surface because there's those grid tiles there. So it sort of doesn't quite blend properly. And it was a little difficult. I did think about sort of slicing all of those tiles individually, but it wasn't really going to work and they weren't going to blend. But by the time you kind of apply those down evenly and it all gets matte varnished, it's gonna, it just looks awesome anyway and it, it's not a problem, especially once you sprinkle some rubble down. So once I've applied sort of three or four, I went for like a tessellating pattern over three or four of the tiles with the big logos there, then I came back with a little bit more rubble, applied some of my uh, diluted PVA matte varnish mixture and then sprinkled rubble all through the inside of the building and then it was, yeah, it, was, it just came together and I think it was a, a really nice addition that really helps bring the theme of the board build into the base itself. So super happy with that. Then what you need to do is let that dry overnight. Make sure it completely cooks off and it goes nice and hard and it's really solid. But you will notice that that isn't enough to lock it down. Material will still come loose. So then I come in uh, and put uh, that diluted PVA matte varnish mixture into a spray bottle and then apply a sealing layer all over the board. And you can literally douse the board in this stuff. It might look scary because you're covering the beautiful basing 
amazing material with, you know, a, a kind of large amount of white liquid, but it is going to all evaporate and dry and go clear and really matte. It won't add any gloss, and that adds as a really nice sealing element that locks it down, and I printed up just a little description as if the staff were defending their store on Terra of a future alien invasion in the 42nd millennium, and then just applied a bit of a tea stain to that to knock back the white of the label and kind of tie it in. And there we have all of the models done, the base done, and I am so happy with how this has turned out. I think it's really fun. I love the idea of the theme, uh, and, and I'm, I'm yeah, I'm just I'm just stoked with the final finish. And I think we've achieved something really cool that the store are going to be able to put on display, and uh, we'll hopefully catch the eye of a few patrons walking through. So there we have it guys, I'm super happy with how the piece turned out, even though the scheme is, you know, super simple with the monochromatic elements, I'm really happy with the way that, you know, we managed to kind of pull all the bits together with the base and, and, and then the transfers and, and kind of still, still make it visually interesting. Can you guys hear that music? Hey Zorpers, this is Brent from Goobertown Hobbies. I'm interrupting this broadcast to show off my green Crossroad Marines. The Crossroad Marines are a tribute to my favorite local game store. Crossroad Games. I've been a happy customer for 16 years. If you can make the pilgrimage to Standish, Maine, I highly recommend it. While you're there, you can see these blade guard in person. If that's not an option, you can at least go see me painting them over on Goobertown Hobbies. Alright, back to you, Lucky. Ah, so thank you so much for joining me guys. If this is your first time here, definitely subscribe and check out all the other content we've got here on the channel. I've got terrain tutorials, some epic 9th edition 40k content rolling out, as well as some crazy cinematic battle reports. And make sure you check out Brent's store colors video as well. It is absolutely fantastic. And thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you right here next time on Zorbazorb Gaming. Cheers guys.